Um, today we're going to talk about CNN and how they're moving further to the to the Republican side because they just got rid of Brian Stelter. They fired him from his one show that he had. Um, now, Stel- Brian Stelter is off the air. CNN seems determined to repeat the grotesque errors that led to Donald Trump. Now, if you want to understand Donald Trump's malevolence and the immense harm he has caused the American people and the world, you need to follow one basic rule. Take the worst thing you can imagine about Trump's character, behavior, and motivations, then take that several steps further into the realm of apparent absurdity, then quite likely you will have arrived at some approximation of the truth. Except that Donald Trump is a bottomless mall of um, um, perfidy, uh, perfidy, basically, enabling and, and, and he's enabled and perpetuated the worst, ex- the worst successes of human behavior, and the reality of the age of Trump comes into sharp focus, and this is not doom porn or hysteria or Trump derangement syndrome. It is simply the truth, which offers us some possibility of understanding and ultimately a victory. Refusing to believe the truth, however, leads to inevitable defeat in the struggle to save America and the world from the rising fascist tide that we see from the Republican Party. The axiom that we should expect the worst, or, or worse than the worst, from Trump and his movement applies to um, every issue before, during, and since his um, squatting that he, um, when he got kicked out. Like the coronavirus pandemic, Russia's interference in the 2016 election, chronic fraud and corruption and so dealing, and of course the big lie, and Trump's coup attempt and the, um, and the January 6th Klan attack on the U.S. Capitol. That same rule certainly applies to the Department of Justice investigating Donald Trump for having taken hundreds of highly classified and top-secret documents reportedly including the information about the nuclear weapons from the White House and storing them at Mar-a-Lago for his own, purpose, um, own purposes. Two weeks ago, the FBI obtained a warrant and they searched Trump's residence at his private resort in Palm Beach. And this is where they seized many do- many boxes of classified documents. The mainstream media was compelled was compelled to act shocked and amazed at the potentially serious crime that the former squatter had committed. Such a reaction was not wholly unreasonable, but this is the first time in American history that the Department of Justice and the FBI have investigated a former squatter for serious criminal charges. Moreover, the implication that a former commander in chief would actually be engaged in some form of espionage or extortion involving national secrets, potentially endangering the safety and security of the American people may sound like something torn from the pages of Sapar spy thriller rather than an actual possibility. Now, two weeks later, the scale and implications of Trump's possible violations of the Espionage Act and other laws regarding presidential records and government secrets now appear much worse. In response to this investigation, Donald Trump claimed that he is a victim of a political witch hunt, which he isn't, and this is predictable, this is predictable and entirely untrue. Like other fascist and political strongmen, Trump believes that he is above the law, which he is not. And to that end, Trump is effectively encouraging his um, sycophantic inbreds to engage in acts of violence to defend him and the maggot movement from, from President Biden, Attorney General Merrick Garland, and the Department of Justice and the Democrats, which he perceives as which he perceives and looks at as enemies, if, even if they're not. If the media and the larger political class had observed many um, had observed any basic um, role about the limitless possibilities of Trump's perfidy, nothing about his continuing political crime spree would come as a fucking surprise to anybody. To many people in media and political class, they have chosen to remain on the endless treadmill of shock and surprise. Now, largely, it's because this narrative is both profitable and comforting. Controversy drives viewers, and it drives readers, and it drives advertising revenue. Now, the spectacle keeps the public watching. Um, that, now, if you call it a spectacle, it keeps the public watching, reading, and clicking on any news story that they find on the internet. Now, to borrow from the world of professional wrestling, too often the mainstream news media is selling the sizzle and not the steak. And not the steak. This creates an endless cycle of the spectacular that numbs, um, that numbs public sensibilities. The next event in the cycle must be even more shocking and amazing than the last one. Perspective is fucking lost, and the public's capacity for discernment and good decision-making is further diminished. Now, to keep repeating the narrative that Donald Trump's behavior is somehow shocking or fucking surprising is also comforting for the news media and larger political class because it, uh, it presupposes that Trump and his neo-fascist movement are limited or somehow governed by the norms and rules of democracy. In other words, they rely on the assumption that there is some bottom to their per- perfidy and willingness to harm democracy, society, and the American people. Now, to state the truth of this, um, that there are no such limits is simply not acceptable in this context. So the mainstream media continues with its obsolete habits in attempting to explain the behavior of Trump and his movement and the threat that they represent to us. In practice, this desperate normalcy um, bias results in um, this desperate normalcy bias results in the persistence of both sides' coverage and an obsession with objectivity, ob- obje- objectivity, unfairness, and balance, rather than a willingness to act as, as bold and unapologetic defenders of democracy, which they're not. There, these are, there are many recent examples, like last week, 
journalist Brian Stelter, CNN show Reliable Sources, was canceled by Chris Litch, who's the network CEO, um, who's the network's um, who's the network CEO of um, of CNN. Um, Litch reportedly did not approve of Stelter's opinionated style on broadcasting, and he had, and he had issued directives to writers and an on and on air personnel to stop referring to Trump's false claims about the 2020 election as the big lie, because that's technically what it was. It was a lie because the election wasn't stolen, and because that language is too partisan. Litch also reportedly wants, wanted more conservative guests and more straight news reporting on CNN. Now, these changes are not about presenting any more robust truth to viewers, but it's about, max, but it's about, it's about maximizing profits by appealing to Republicans, the Trump sycophantic inbreds and centrists. Litch, um, Litch also took the unusual step of meeting with Democratic and Republican leaders, apparently to discuss CNN's future direction. The right-wing echo chamber is celebrating this decision as a de facto apology um, to her for the network's purported liberal bias. Now, what do balance and fairness look like when one political party is engaged in a systemic assault in a systematic assault on democracy, freedom, and the rule of law, and not to mention truth and reality itself? And what about the fourth estate's obligation in a democracy to tell the truth and stand up to the powerful and hold on and hold the elected officials and other leaders accountable? Now, um, now a writer a, a writer at Medium um, called Wajahat Ali had recently um. Um, had recently observed that fascism will be welcomed and normalized in America as long as it delivers good ratings, money, and access to power. And this is what he had to say. Most American, most American institutions, especially corporate media, have, re- have basically refu- have refused to learn anything in the past five years in which the GOP and the entire right-wing ecosystem have become radicalized and weaponized, and they, and beca- and they became a weaponized authoritarian movement that views them as oppressive instruments of the deep state. The message... The message that sends to Amer- the message that this sends to America is that it pays to be a bad faith actor. You get to fail as long as you provide the ratings. Just look at Donald Trump in 2016. Former CBS CEO um, Leo Moonves, who um, had, in- had infamous had infamously admitted that Trump may not be good for America, but is but he's damn good for for, for foe. Now, former C- C- um, CNN CEO Jeff Zucker has still has no regrets about helping elevate. And mainstream and mainstream Donald Trump through the Apprentice and CNN's initial coverage of his 2015 Klan rallies, and nobody's perfect, right? It's not just CNN, but mainstream but mainstream media companies across the board have learned all the wrong lessons. In May of 2022, CBS News hired Mick Mulvaney, Trump's former chief of staff, who was utterly complicit in enabling all of his destructive and inco- all of um, all of Trump's destructive incompetence. A CBS executive justified the hire by saying that they needed more Republicans for access, assuming Democrats would lose the majority in the upcoming 2022 midterm elections. ABC News gave a lucrative contract to Chris Christie to become a political commentator, and the view just and the um and the view just added Alyssa Farrell, Trump's former White House um White House um director of strategic um communications, as a permanent host. The big lie and the violent insurrection were a bridge too far for Farrell, and that gives her and other conservatives a lifetime a lifetime pass to fail to fail in their life even though they were fine with Trump's racism, misogyny, and anti-Semitism, lies, and cruelty. And, th- and there is affirmative action in media, but it only exists for Republicans. We look forward to new panels in 2023 in which guests will debate whether slavery was actually a force of, bene- of benevolence and whether or not Jews have space lasers and are using them to replace white people. After all, you can't be a good centrist journalist who plays it down the middle if you don't make space for these, con- if you don't make space for these conversations where everyone can come and be heard. In a recent, but in a but in a recent Washington Post article, it offered another example of how the mainstream media continues to normalize Trump, um, and American and American neo-fascism. The headline read: Six Six Drastic Plans That Trump Is Already Promising for a Second Term. The subheading follows in recent Klan speeches. The former squatter has begun specifying new policies he pursue. Every returns to um white, to the White House with an emphasis on crime voting, and um and shrinking the government. This linguistic um frame presents Trump and the and the Republicans' assault on democracy and other authoritarian view um uh, on other authoritarian behavior throughout the broken lens of normal politics and business as usual. Now, in reality, Trump's plans for a second term would involve establishing himself as an American king or an emperor with the power to fire government employees for disloyalty, and he wants to use and he wants to use the National Guard as his personal stormtroopers in black and brown communities, and to expand the war on multiracial democracy by creating a new Jim Crow style um, style system of white minority rule. American politics has been broken by asymmetrical polarization and negative partisanship. On one side, the Republican fascists want to end multiracial pluralistic democracy, and they want to replace it with a Christian fascist apartheid plutocracy. On the other side, the Democrats and other pro-democracy forces want to stop them at that, and there's no moral equivalency. The two parties are not equally responsible for the country's democracy crisis. 
yet, inti yet institutional norms and rules within mainstream media continue to encourage a false equivalency. Last June, the media scholar Jay Rosen interviewed Mark, Mark Jacob, um, who was a former editor at the Chicago Tribune and Chicago Sun-Times about the media's failures in the age of Trump, and Jacob reflected on how he tried to ensure an equal number of quotes from Republicans and Democrats in news, in news articles and how that supposed commitment to balance actually empowered Trump and his forces. Um, there were a number of errors in the process. One was in thinking of a news story as a stage that allowed Republicans and Democrats to perform their talking points rather than as a way to inform re readers about the issues and the facts as much as possible. It was also a fucking mistake to prioritize who, were speaking, who was speaking rather than what the fuck they were saying. But there are times when a party's leadership has coalesced around the fucking lie. The Republican disinformation about the January 6th committee, for example. If you're obligated to run a quote by a Republican leader on, the, on, on that, you're going to run a lie. And if you, don't debunk it at the, if you don't debunk it at the same time, you're enabling the liars. And, and when did we come to grips with this problem? As the Republican Party became more corrupt and at the same time more adept at laundering its message through, the, um, through what we call legitimate media, you see my equal time approach made more sense when the two major parties were equally corrupt and dishonest. Back in the 1980s and 90s, and there are still bad actors in the Democratic Party today also, but as the Republican Party and mass has become an increasingly dangerous anti-democratic force, Equal time for the parties has become equal time for truth and for lies. This old-fashioned mainstream journalist, journalism approach, in which both Republicans and Democrats get to have their say, Jacob said was free land of democracy, and it was increasingly being exploited by propagandists. The idea that we had to be fair to Republicans versus Democrats instead of being fair to the, to the public and the facts was a great gift to, um, to professional um, political liars. They were, they were able to insert fake issues into the mainstream news media, and they saw their falsehoods repeated by objective journalists, that, and they were conferring a sense of legitimacy. Old-fashioned journalism has been no match for right-wing propaganda. It has been a fucking slaughter. The Destroy, Amer the Destroy America democracy from the Republican fascists requires the news media and other public voices to defend without apology our qualification, multiracial democracy, the Constitution, human rights, civil rights, and the rule of law. And to be biased against fascists and other authoritarians is a virtue. It's the, main it's the minimum that should be demanded of the fourth estate in a democratic democracy. Now, if the Republican media were to be truly objective here, it would, con it would consistently report on the Republican fascist ex existential touch to democracy, freedom, and society. And what the Trumpists and neo-fascists strive uh, on is, coward is, co is, um, is cowardly neutral and, and neutrality in which, in, in, which evil, in which they see evil is good and right is wrong. Um, and what they, consider right, um, what they consider wrong is right, lies and truths are presented as effectively the entire same thing. As a practical matter, that framework empowers the Republican fascists and larger white right and other anti-democracy -democ um, forces. Embracing pro-democracy um, journalism would also mean acknowledging that reporters, editors, producers, and other journalists are real human beings and not automatons or abstractions who exist outside the society and, and they're untouched by the, con and the consequences of politics and larger questions of power in society. The pursuit of, 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 the pursuit of objectivity is both, is both pointless and fucking false. Alex Sujong Laughlin explores this in an article for Pointer, for Pointer um, following the Supreme Court's Dobbs decision when managers at, new, at some new, newsrooms had sent emails reminding workers to avoid tweeting anything that may give a perception of, of any bias. Now, the emails were sent in a service of newsrooms' desires to uphold the journalistic value of, um, ob of objectivity or at least the appearance of it, when according to Gallup, only 36% only of the country had a, had a great sense and, and deal or any fair amount of trust in the, in the mass media. But we understand why the need for, uh, for a legacy newsroom is to be perceived as unbiased seems critical. The pursuit of the appearance of objectivity as opposed to focusing on, to focusing on, um, on truthful and context reporting of the news has always been a cynical republic, has been a cynical public relations tactic, one that comes to, promin to prominence at a time when the industry and who works in it looked very different than it does today. Performing objectivity is outdated, and if we want to preserve public trust in media and institutions, the best thing we can do is fucking tell the truth, which the Republicans cannot and neither can Trump, rather than adapting to the, to the, um, the rhetorical needs of an unprecedented period of, de of democratic destabiliz destabilization. Legacy newsrooms are clinging to outdated values while, con while conceding only when the public opinion demands of it or when the Overton window shifts, um, shifts so the issue becomes mainstream. We can do the important work of witnessing the world, verifying the truth, and contextualizing it for our readers while acknowledging our humanity and telling the truth about how these decisions will affect us personally. Um, we are running out of time in the struggle to save American democracy and society from the Republican fascists and their forces. 
The American news media and other public voices must escape the comforts of normalcy bias and the empty hope that the Republican fascists and other conservatives are fundamentally good on people who will snap back to their senses and renew their supposed commitment to share a democratic norm of, and values. In the final episode of Reliable Sources, Brian Stelter said it is not partisan to stand up for, dem- for decency and democracy or any dialogue. It is not partisan to stand up to demagogues. It's required and it's patriotic. But we must make sure that we do not give a platform to those who are lying to our faces. The American media should treat Stelter's um, words as a guiding principle. <coughs> Sorry. The, Amer- the American media should treat Brian Stelter's words as a guiding principle and embrace the responsibility of defending democracy. This is a, this is an existential battle, and we have and we have no need of neutral of neutral referees. So if you like the video, you can get the video like and subscribe to my channel, RBW King. You can also hit the notification bell so that you will be notified when a new video comes out. And if you want to support my work even further, you can donate to my Patreon link, which you can find in the about section of YouTube. And for just as little as a few bucks a month, your donation can help go a long way. Um, and thanks for listening. And I'll be back in another hour for another video.